What's up you guys, it is your boy JB and I am here today with the review for Insecure Season 4 Episode 8. So you guys, we got two more episodes left of this season and we're done. This episode was titled Low Key Happy. So you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right into this episode review, shall we? Alright you guys, I thought this was a pretty good episode. What did you guys think about it? Let me know in the comment section below. So... You guys remember in last week's episode when Lawrence got back from Fred's from Frisco, he called someone, asked could they meet up. So we see in this episode that he's at a bar and then Issa comes in and nigga when Issa walked in and busts her motherfucking face, I died laughing. It was hella funny. So you know they catching up with each other. He asked Issa how it was a block party. She tells him, oh, you know, I did that shit. But, you know, some other shit happened, and he, she didn't really go into it. So then he, he tells her, you know, I just came back from San Francisco doing an interview. He's thinking about, you know, moving on and moving up. And I'm like, okay, Lawrence, took you a, a while to get on your feet, but you're doing a damn thing. I ain't hating on you. So then Issa tells him that, you know, she heard about him and Condola. And he says, oh, man, it's, it's all good. And, you know, he asked her about Molly. And she says, you know, me and Molly, we're not friends right now. We're not friends anymore. We're not talking. He looked at like she's like, you know, I'm dead ass serious. Like, we ain't talking. And it was so funny because you sit there and look at Issa and Lawrence. It's as if they had not missed a beat with each other. It's like they never broke up. It's like they are just a couple that's out on a date in a bar with a lot of people who got turned up to Lizzo. Truth hurts. And, you know, um... They're trying to have a conversation with each other. Because, you know, he was like, you said you wanted to talk, so what's up? And then a guy just steps in between them. He's like, they were like, damn, we are standing here. Like, we sit here talking. They're like, oh, shiny, we'll see y'all. I'm like, how you didn't see them? But whatever. <clears throat> so then they, they go, you know, they leave. And I'm like, so, you know, because Issa's trying to figure out, like, so what's up, Lawrence? Like, what you want to talk about? And she's like, he was like, um... You want to go to the, you know, you want to go somewhere else? Like, let's find somewhere else to go. By the way, the drinks on the, drinks was on the, um, the bar because of Issa falling and buzzing her face. So, you know, they just have to go to this Latin restaurant that they always want to go to. <clears throat> so they call, so, um, Lawrence calls a, um, a lift for him. So they get in the lift and the woman is talking to him. And, you know, I have had those situations where I've been in the Uber and been in the lift. Where either the driver wants to talk the whole way. I'm like, oh my God. And sometimes I be having my headphones in my ear. And it's just like they still talking. I'm like, really? I have headphones in my ear. That means I'm not listening to you. But I mean, if you want to talk, let's go for it. I, I, I'm not really in a talking mood. Especially <clears throat> if it's like early in the morning. Please shut the fuck up and just leave me be. Before I even got my car. Like when I used to work for Hertz. There were times that I would live to work and my drivers want to talk. I'm like, dude, it's early in the morning. Like, can we not talk? Can you let me be? Like, please. All the time that I had to live to work from hurt at hurt was because of my car. What happened to my car that I had to lift? Cause something actually oh, my tire was on flat. <clears throat> that I throw on y'all. So yeah, they in the lift, she's talking to him, and you know, the lift driver is noticing that there's some chemistry between those two. She asked him, are they on the first date? She's like, they like, nope, not a first date. She says, oh, are y'all married? Nope, not married. But Lawrence did buy a ring. And she's like, well, nigga, propose to her. With the light flashing, um, they were like, um, lady, turn your ass back around. Like, it, it ain't like that. <clears throat> So I'm going to pause here for you guys and move on. All right, you guys. So then Issa and Lawrence make it to the restaurant. Now, Lawrence asked Issa before they got there. He was like, had you been here before? She was like, no. But then when they got there, she was like, yeah, I've been here before. And she ordered for them. And so then she was like, so what's up, Lawrence? Like, you know, keep it real with me. Like, why? What's up? Like, why we, you know, why, why you want to we, 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 keep it real with her? Why do you want to meet up with her? So, you know, he says he's been thinking lately, like, what would have happened if they had stayed together? 
and he also wants it, did he give up so easily on their relationship? And then Issa's like, well, you know, I had thought, I was always thinking that I wish you didn't give up on us so easily. So then he asked her a question. He says, so why Daniel? Could it have been anyone else? And she says, no, it couldn't have been anyone else. And so he asked her, so yeah, then why Daniel? And she says, because at that time, Daniel was showing me attention that I necessarily wasn't getting from you. And that's all she really wanted was just someone to show her some attention. So then you made her feel seen. And then he, says, he was like, so were things that bad between us? She says, yes, things were that bad between us. She says, when I used to get off from work, I would just drive around sometimes before even coming home because I just didn't want to deal with I just didn't want to deal with it. I'm like, wow. That's when you know your shit is fucked up. But I'm going to place a little blame on Issa. I'm going to place blame on Issa because if Issa felt so strongly about the situation and, you know, him not having a job, I think Issa should have been a better able to articulate her feelings and thoughts to him. But, you know, you live and you learn. And, you know, he felt like Issa didn't want him anymore and that's what was, you know, going on with the relationship. No, I still wanted you at that time 100%. And, you know, she said she was just scared that they would fall into old habits. And I understand that, you know. And, um. So he also said that, you know, he, he felt bad. And I think what it is about Lawrence, I think Lawrence felt bad about the situation that, you know, Issa was the one going out every day working, whereas he was at home and not really doing much with his life. So I, I get that. You feel stuck. You feel in a rut. And I, I do understand that because I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. But I mean, I understand that. But damn, he could have at least found some kind of job. So then Issa's like, like you know, and he says, you know, it was easier for him to blame, blame Issa than to, you know, sit there and deal with his own shit. That's fucked up. So then Issa, you know, she gets ready. She says, you know what? I need to go to the bathroom real quick. So when she gets up to go to the bathroom, Lawrence is on his phone and Condola had texted him about meeting up with her. I'm like, well, damn, you want a date with Issa? You texted Condola. Condola. Like, what kind of shit is this? And I'm like, well, that is true. I'm like, damn. So then, you know, as Issa and Lawrence are leaving, they run into who? TSA Bay, TSA Bay, who's on a date with his new with his new girl. And then he said that girl's name was Mazda, like the, like the car, Mazda, nigga. Brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
By this point in my life, I had expected to have my master's, but I don't have that yet. Oh, God, that just, oh, what the fuck? <sighs> but yeah, you know, it is what it is. But I definitely understand where Issa's coming from about, you know, not being a, you know, ha in, a, in, a, in a happy place in her life. And what is happy? Now, Lauren says that he is in a happy space, you know. You know, he always thought he wanted to, you know, have his own, have his own business and stuff. But he actually likes being in a team environment. I don't know if I like, I mean, I'm okay with a team environment to an extent. So then, you know, as they're walking, Lawrence gets a call from Condola. And she's like, you gonna take that? He's like, nah. And so Issa asks, like, so what's up between you and Condola right now? He says, you know, we're just talking. Don't really know where things are gonna go. And I'm like, ooh. I think at that point I would have been like, you know what, the day's over, like, you're still talking, you like, you're having a whole conversation with Condola, but okay. So then, you know, they decide, they get ready to leave, and, you know, they gonna call, Uber, Issa's gonna call the lift, and they gonna split it, and she finds out where he lives, and she's like, oh, so that's where you live, you live, like, blocks away from me, so, you know, he bought a painting, and she's like, you know, it's going to be kind of awkward for you to put that paint above an air mattress. He's like, okay. He, he told her, look, can you stay here for like five minutes? She'll be right back down. And she's looking like, what do you mean? He says, come on upstairs. Come on up so I can show you what the place looks like. And, you know, they go in. And the place is actually really nice. So then he's like, can I use the bathroom? So she goes to use the bathroom. And then Lauren steps out to call Condola. Saying that he'll try to make it to see her. I'm like, well, damn, nigga. You got your ex, but you know, hey, I'm not judging too much. So then Issa, he goes back in there and Issa's like, talking to Condola. He's like, yeah, you know, he's like, I ain't even for that to happen. And she says, well, she says, ooh, the lift gonna be pissed. And she's like, well, he was like, she said to him like, well, what if I don't want, what if I want to stay? What if I don't want the night to end? And she was, I was like, oh, Issa feeling him. Which, I, I mean, I've been feeling, I've been noticing that, that Issa's still feeling Lawrence. And she just wasn't ready for the night to, to end. You know, he makes her happy, he says. She makes him happy. So then, you know, they go into the bedroom, and they didn't have sex. They made love to each other. And, you know, the next morning, she wakes up. She leaves out, and Issa seems like she's in really high spirits. And I'm like, all right, Issa, you better get that shit. You better do that. You better do it. But you guys, that was insecure. Be sure to like this video. Leave your comments. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification button so you guys know when I drop any videos. Please share this video. And until the next one, you guys, please, please stay safe out there. Take care of yourself. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.